Yeah. Call meeting order. We'll call meeting to order. Is there any public comment? <coughs> Seeing none, move on to the planning and zoning office report. It's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> um, first time ever that I can recall we had no building permits at all in January. Um, we had one uh, renewal. So that was pretty much it. For, um, we had, we have, actually, we have some activities starting in February, so that's a little bit better sign. Um, building inspections for current permits are listed there and the claims. And that is it. <coughs> Any questions? And like I passed out to everybody, I made books up for all, everybody on the committee to simplify your search for ordinances. Um, subdivision ordinance is not in there, obviously, because I haven't updated it since it was the, the revisions were approved right before Deb retired, and I just haven't had time to send on my priority list. <laughs> I appreciate it. These are very nice. So. The January receipt <coughs> 250. What was that? For? That was a renewal for, uh, uh, a renewal. for a, uh, actually it was a chemical license renewal. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to uh, the request to rezone track to 3.38 acres from A1 district to rural homestead. Chad's here too. Yeah. Okay. Is there any? I just, this is Melissa yep. Cooper and her husband. They're the uh, requesting parties. They're on a 3.3 acre track in uh, Lota Township. That was a uh, former um, home site years ago. The house was torn down in 11 and 12. There was an old barn there that got blown down, but it does have a new well on the, on the property. Um, and um, so they're requesting, it was A1, they're requesting it to go to RH1 to build a new, tentatively build a new house. Um, Thad Eshelman did a soil study. Um, obviously, Iroquois County, the majority of the soil types is conducive to farming, so that's what that report revealed. It's got a high water table, but nothing out of the ordinary. So he had no no adverse recommendations at all. Through his report, um, we had two letters from uh, the neighbor uh, surrounding property owner in support, and also the road commissioner said he didn't have an issue with it. Had easy water and access, you know, local access, and kind of, and so that was uh, that was what we received before the zoning board of appeals. So that's really all I have on it. This is Melissa here. Do you guys have any questions for her, comments? Excuse me. Yeah. Or anything you want to speak about on your floor? Um, are you requesting the rezoning because the bank or financing wants it as a rural homestead? No, we're just requesting just, just so we can have the permit for the house. So, okay, so a bank or financing is it? Okay. The reason I ask is um, the home site was split from the contiguous farm in 1984 and under our ordinance and if you turn which would be section 3.4 D um, it says that one parcel split from an existing home site of at least two acres that existed on February 1st 2005 and it just says the site shall remain contiguous and it is it hasn't been split uh, and this is under zoning A1 and under section E it says the previous conditional use rezoning requirement rezoning a pre-existing home site where the dwelling has been removed, destroyed, or not habitable within the previous year and where historical data can document the site as a previous home site shall now be considered a permitted use. So, the so I move that the requirement to rezone um, is not necessary because per our ordinance on page 10 it was a previous um, permitted use. Uh, it's no longer a conditional rezoning requirement. So I moved to refund their money that they paid for an appeal that was not necessary. I read that too and I was puzzled by so and no 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 offense to, to you Bob. Um, it's it's not 
It's hard to, so, hard to it's interpret uh, sometimes. Um, the ordinance is vague. Um, it does give, I mean, it does in other sections of the conditional use, it does give the zoning administrator some in, in, um, leeway in making decisions whether it was, a, you know, if there was, you know, permitted that way. Um, I just felt it was, you know, in the best interest of them to do it. If, they, if you so move to change that, then obviously going forward we need to clarify the ordinance because this will continue to be an issue. And um, I know that in my um, 25 years of working with lenders in the appraisal side, uh, A1 zoning or A2 zoning for lending purposes is an issue. Now, I'm not saying, obviously, I'm sure that was reason for Chad's initial question. Um, so Yeah, that was as far as to that. That's a, that's a different, you know, that's something down the road. If, uh, um, but this needs to be more clearly defined because um, if there is um, a house, I mean, there's a lot of small tracks that farmers tore the old farmhouse down and the well was still there, the old well, and they didn't plow it under. Obviously, there's others that have been plowed under and turned into production, others that have it. Um, that's not clearly defined if that's a permitted use or not. Um, so, to me, that's, you know, that's up to you guys can make that with motion or recommendation. I don't. Um, it's vague in the ordinance. I interpreted, you know, there's never been a legal challenge one way or the other. Um, so, um, that was my recommendation to them. Um, it was advertised as a buildable lot when I purchased it from the, on the MLS. I checked that, um, which, you know, technically, I mean, step back wise and size wise it is. Um, so, um, that's all I have to Before a second, um, is keeping an A1 fine for you, or do you need to have it RH, World Homestead? Because as far as I'm concerned, the ordinance allows you to build as is without having to go through an appeal process. But Mr. Yerber makes a good point. I know when I built and stuff that makes it care, but some do. Okay, so they don't, yeah, they don't care because our ordinance allows it. Okay. So, what did it cost? Discussion. What did it cost? For four hundred. Four hundred. So why we'll take a little bit on publications and, and uh, some letters, but that's it. And publications were less than I'd say less than seventy bucks. We only got to publish in one paper. Do you guys want to call your bank and, and clarify before we make any decisions here? We can. Because I can raise this in front of the full board too. Yeah. I can hold it and wait till Tuesday to talk to the full board. I feel the ordinance allows you to build as is. Yeah, it's, it's contradictory. So. I can call them and Okay, we can go on to other stuff. Yeah, I and the reason I'm doing it, I brought this up because when I got the letter and I saw that, my first reaction is, why are we charging when the ordinance allows? Okay. And when I asked him, he brought a good point. So, um, and. And I, this, what you guys have done helps highlight that our ordinance is uh, contradictory. So, and we have to fix it. Okay. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's been there. You qualify. So, we can um, postpone. Well, there was never a second. So, it, we'll just make it, we'll come back to it. If you guys okay. would like to do that, we can move on. We'll come back to it uh, okay. before the meeting's over. Well, that's a good point, Chad, yeah, because I, yeah. I was reading that last night. Yeah, I've been and studying this and thing. I, I, of course, there's so much stuff that it's hard to interpret, hard to understand. Yeah. So I didn't really know that well, yeah. what it meant, for sure. But it seemed like it w was prevented. Mm -hmm. Who knows? And you start, I mean, obviously, if it's not clearly defined, then you're going to have people come in and want to build a uh, track that hasn't had any buildings or structures on it for 30 or 40 years and say, well, we don't have to rezone it because it was a homestead back. Now, Good. The, the, <laughs> ordinance, the, ordinance, the, ordinance, the ordinance does say if you can, if you can show doc proof or documentation of historical documents that it was a home site, 
then it gives the zoning administrator leeway to make a decision whether to rezone or not to rezone. Yeah. And on a case by case basis, that's to me that's a decision that you know I'm I'm going to decide. <laughs> you know, obviously, you guys have the final say. But initially, I'm going to decide I'm going to treat them all this one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And if it's not clearly defined, because it is a lot of it, you know. And and people do ask. Well, I, I knew there was a house back there when my grandfather was alive. You know, I hear that. It's two time, and, and and people are inquiring and questioning. And so I don't. Um, to me, like I said, on the lending side, and I'm just telling you, she can call her banker all she wants. All she wants. If, if it's a secondary market lender, that banker has no final say on that. It's going to be the secondary market. You're not going to get an answer from them today, tomorrow, or next week, or two months from now. Um, so, if it's clearly defined, then I mean, you know, obviously. Um, I don't I mean, like I said, I don't care. I mean, if somebody wants to, um, however it reads, it reads, and uh, we'll go from there. And if you want to, you know, treat them that way, I mean, that obviously streamlines the process. If you want to continue to, you know, if it's an existing site, just if it's a permitted use, I have no issue with that. And I can, I can just yeah. treat that case, that's the way it is. If you can prove to me there was a house on it at the one time, our pressure to go back, 50, uh, 50, 60 years now in our office, and if we can look back on the cards and see if there was an actual structure there at one time, then we can. I want to make clear you did nothing wrong on how what you were interpreted based on what you've been taught. Um, it's just the contradictions throughout because you can back up and you can see where, but being this is a separate item because it's listing items that are that one qualifies, and it just shows how we have to if. If Iroquois County wants to grow and start going on the upside instead of down to 28,000 and get above 30, we have to be friendly to letting people build on sites that aren't farmed. And we have to make it known, um, you know, through Wendy over there where she says Iroquois County is wanting to be friendly now to build to, to homeowners um, because we are not friendly. We, we just aren't. We make it too difficult. And the difficulty comes from the way some of these things are written. It's, now, I'm, I'm not for building huge subdivisions, but we have a, a plethora of like you're saying, old farm sites where they farm around it, and that should be a no-brainer built. Um, and that I think there is a market out there that would love to be the only person, especially if the power line's all there, you know, but so, okay. but I want to make clear, nothing with you. It's you did right. We have no problem with it staying at. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Chad, I I would have to disagree a little bit about being friendly. When I was on zoning a couple of years ago, we changed the ordinances to make the minimum square footage a lot less to try to in, you know encourage yes. house building. The so we are, we are yes we are trying we have we to change trying. the perception yeah, we and that, yes we have to change the perception but the perception is still out there the that if you don't have 80 yeah. acres forget it and if you're not a farmer forget it um, and I know it's been because I can look at it where it says amended 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 and it's slowly coming down but um, so but we and I talked with Ken Bergy about thinking outside the box and include and let's find some farmers that say yeah I'll sell this three acres and look, try to use his connections and, and his website because it's an economic development and stop thinking business we got to get people down here but that's a separate but um and we have to fix and I've been just going through notes and stuff and I just saw this one and it convicted and all of a sudden I get this in the mail I'm like whoa there's a way to and and uh, Bob I also reading through here I think he has too much on his plate too. <laughs> but I thought there was something about a two or three year period or something. Uh, what does that? Do you recall something there, like in that? The, in the one of the, I don't know if it's in the A1 section, it says if it's deemed uninhabitable for over a year, mm -hmm. then there's some discretionary thought process in that. If the house still is still there, I think 
on the old, the old house is not livable at all and it's inhabitable or if it's been inhabited for two or three years. Okay. Yeah, it gives a description. Single family dwellings of the following types. A talks about a pre existing single family dwelling um, that has been in a habitable, habitable condition with utility for at least three years and inhabited within one year. So that's one type of house. Or page seven. So A is one description, and again, it, then it describes the requirements if you want to fall under A. Then B says another type of home that could be put on there on page 8 is a single family dwelling for relatives of the landowner on a 75 acre track. And then item C is another type of home. I think we're kind of digressing here. Though. Yeah. Let's get to that in a minute. We have a motion well, on the floor. Yeah. We'll come back to that. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? And the motion is what again? Can you read that back? Can you? Yeah, the motion is to um, um, refund their money they paid and to allow the house to be built um, on A1 per our ordinance section 3.41A item D. 1A item D. Yes. Allow their house to be built per our ordinance. And it's on page 9. Section 3.41A, item D, yep. page Eight, nine. 9. Do you want to include the dollar amount? Uh -huh. $400. $400. Okay. And as a A1. Okay. In the minute, can we get the, that paragraph reflected to for yeah. clarification? I'll just get a copy yeah. of that for you. Do you want to include their name as well? Yes. Okay. Now the full board still has to concur with me, which I don't know. But See, for me, there's a motion on the floor. You're still going to get a second. Still I know. Second. Yeah. Is there a second? No second. Okay. It's that motion dies. Uh, one reason I guess I didn't. Uh, I'm looking out for the county a bit too, but we do have like over $450 in the fees for the Zoning Board of Appeals, mileage, and that kind of thing. And then what the publication, so we've got over $500 that the county did spend. Yes, but the county is the one that erred against the Coopers. I, I, we have to eat that. I, we I erred. agree that. Yeah. So we eat that because we are the ones that chose to charge them. But was it an error or yes. not? I mean, it was it a, is judgment. It was a judgment. I know, it, irregardless, I'm not saying he was wrong in how he thought. What I'm saying is our ordinance says that they could have built without having to go through it. We erred, and so we own that. And it's been contradictory for many years. Inception. Yes, but we erred by making them go through an appeal board when they did not desire to go through an appeal board. Okay, uh, John. I think we're kind of getting off track here a little bit. I think these folks uh, have a very good desire to build a home on a home that is a home site. Um, our policies and procedures may not be completely correct, but this is what we've been using for a number of years now. And I don't think we should delay what these people want to do. I visited their site. Uh, certainly everything that they say, everything that they want to do, is in line with our policy for as long as I've been on the county board. We're not unfriendly, we're trying to be friendly, uh, friendlier all the time. I've asked the committee to review all of the ordinances. Uh, Mr. Anderson, when he was chairman, made that request. Mr. Copeland, when he was chairman, made that request. So we are continuing to review the ordinances. Uh, in order to make them as friendly as possible to people who want to build on these sites throughout the county. I want to continue that process. I think we should, if there is any possibility of using this as they want, that might interfere with the people's plans to build on that land, I would suggest that we go ahead and make a rural homestead. And if it becomes a question of the future. Uh, further down the road, if you want to refund the money, that's a separate issue that can be listed later. But I think you need to move on with this thing. 
Yeah, I'm not opposed to the whole building thing. What I'm saying is just because we have done it that way doesn't mean it's right. I have seen in the Army sergeant majors that would enforce a regulation for 20 years that, that did not exist simply because that's how they did it. Um, the ordinance is clear that they can build. And at some point, we have to stop kicking the can, and that's what we are doing right now is, well, let's worry about it later. No, let's, let's, let's correct a wrong, and just because we have done it that way doesn't mean it's right. There's a lot of things that this county board has done for a long time that doesn't mean it's right. So, so if we agree that we erred, by tr making them go through an appeal process that was not required, then where is the courage to say we were wrong and we need to fix it and refund it and move it forward I to the full board? I don't think you understood what I said. No, what I heard you say was let's go ahead and approve it and deal with it later no, that's not what and said. fix it. Yeah, we're, we're not going to have a bigger so. here, so we're going to move on with business. <clears throat> We can address this in this meeting, but as of right now, let's let's do something to move this meeting forward. We can we can argue it all day long, and it's not going to do anything except waste their time. So, as far as this goes, is there any other motions on the floor, or anybody willing to make a motion? To to prove it. Uh, uh, to approve the rezoning for RH1. Uh, I <coughs> I'll move that we do approve the rezoning to RH1. Moved by Marvin Sticknoff, is there a second? Seconded by Ernie Curtis. Would you please call the roll? Sticknoff? Yes. Curtis? <coughs> McGinnis? Yes. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries. Since all this... Uh, I'm sorry that the property can't can be built all the time. Why not? There was a house it's there before. And so that they don't have the courage to do what's right. If it would come in there, right. what? How would that be? What's that? Floodplain? Yeah. There's no floodplain. Not in this case, but I'm saying if it would be in, in you know, uh, all this floodplain's been fairly new, hasn't it, since uh, yeah, uh, 20 well, years now? Yeah, probably. I'd put 20 years on well, you're talking about a 50-year-old homestead. Exactly. Obviously, that would take all the the the, the uh, floodplain ordinance would take all the 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 or you uh it is approved out of this committee. Uh, yeah, you I, I know you don't have to attend full board meeting Tuesday. If you want to, it's beneficial. In case there's any questions, uh, as far as the agenda goes, it's, it's usually towards the, the bottom of the agenda. Nine and going toward the end in the report, so ten. 15. Yeah, probably. 10, 10, I think 10 is what you said. You want to go. All right. All right. <coughs> now we uh, move on to reviewing of the general ordinance. We're, we're, we're done. Yeah, you don't have to say. Thank you. Everybody got a copy of it? Yes. we were looking at, it would have remained agriculture for a home building. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which then, if they wanted to, on 3.8 acres, you know, have some critters or under an agriculture thing, there's less restrictions. Mm -hmm. And I think agriculture is in our best interest to maintain 
which is why the zoning of A1 I think is important to keep it versus A2 or subdivision. But we have, um, are we all on, sec on the A1 section? Okay. Um, what we have to look at is under A, the permitted uses, there's, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, five permitted uses listed, um, separately defined items A through E, where the contradiction comes in is you have item A, which gives the three-year thing, which is the first permitted use that we see, and it describes bulk requirements of the house, which, you know, you can tell that it was lower, because I remember it was higher, and then under item B, <coughs> You know, it says, okay, if you have 75 acres and you have a relative, then they can build there too, and it says the size of the house. Then we have items C and D, which C kind of repeats B, but it removes the uh, relative part and just saying um, that to build a house, if you're not a relative, you have to own 75 acres. Um, and then D is the one that you could say contradicts um, D and E both do um, D and E kind of repeat each other um, E's previous conditional use rezoning requirement of rezoning a pre-existing home site where the dwelling has been removed, destroyed, or not habitable within the previous year and where historical data can document the site as a previous home site shall not be considered a permitted use. The Cooper family actually fell better under E than they did D but D and E kind of say similar it's almost like we kept adding to correct it. We kept adding to, and but at the same time, um, it is somewhat clear because it does start off with section A and it lists the description of a permitted use. Then two, it talks about the single-family dwellings and it gives you five different types of single-family dwellings that can be built. So, in some respects, um, it is clear. You know, item E does pretty much say if you can show that there's a house there at some point, then you can build. Um, so I probably erred in that item E actually fits their their uh, criteria better. I think what happens is everyone stops on item A. I'm wondering on item E, I'm just a little unclear, is item E mean that if the farm is intact, say you've got 80 acres there, and there was a homestead previously, it's not split off, but it was a homestead previously, you can go ahead and build another one. It, that contradicts a little bit with a section being sold off and built. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm unclear on what that actually means. Yeah, D talks about, you know, if it was split off prior to 2005. I mean, there is a thing about, that's probably when this was amended. It was probably that time frame, yeah, March 8th, 2005 is when it was actually amended. So it probably was being discussed and that date was set. So that kind of, I think, answers your question. But then E kind of takes gets rid of, I mean, E just says if there was a home on there at some point in, in historical data, which um, goes back, I think you said 60 some years or whatever, so if you can prove that there was a home there, then you could build it. There's nothing saying land requirements. It just says if there was a home. It doesn't, it doesn't address the fact whether it was sold Mm -hmm. sold off. D does. D does because it talks about if it was split from an existing home site of at least two acres. So, but the previous ones, what A through C, are fairly specific. Um, you know, A is pretty, pretty specific. 
but then I would say D and especially E contradict A because A has the it's almost like it was amended and within the ordinance that amended or within the uh, resolution that amended this ordinance it was never mentioned to strike item A or to strike item E whenever they were put in. And so it looks like we were adding two, but forgetting to strike out previous stuff. And, I mean, you know, the bulk requirements are there. You know, that was lessened. Um, but I think, I just think we all, most people, we stop at item A and think that covers if there's a home or something. But item E, item E basically says if you can prove there's a home on it, you can build Whereas A basically says you have to prove there's a home, but it better have been lived in within a year of the past three. So A and E really contradict. Mm -hmm. At least the appearance of it. Because one gives guidance and the other. So I'm thinking what we need to look at is how we merge A and E together and in the process, D could probably disappear. I mean, C helps if you bought eight, 75 acres and you want to put a house on it, start a little farm, then that, that's pretty clear. You know, same thing with B. That's clear. Right on, on page 7, uh, at the bottom, on the small A, of course, it, it says, uh, it will be the duty of the zoning enforcement officer mm -hmm. to determine uh, some of these requirements. So Yeah, for this one, if it meets that one. Yeah. But that line is missing on the others. Yeah. So I think what has to be answered is when A, D, and E were added to, you know, which, what order and what was the intent? And the one thing I haven't gone to go do yet is to go pull the uh, the resolutions to see or the minutes from the, that time frame. That was on my next agenda is just to do that research. But I think for us, we have to make Mr. Yergler's job a lot easier so that he doesn't have to... Um, make decisions in the gray or whatever. I think we just need to keep it simple for him so that they can come in and he can say without a doubt, yes, this works or no, it doesn't. Because right now we're putting a burden on him while he's trying to take care of the whole tax stuff and we're burdening him with the zoning thing too. And of course he was working on the side of caution. To not no, and he should, right and you should. That's the right thing to do. And this is that's the right thing. He did nothing wrong, but we are putting too much of a burden on him or his position. I mean, it'd, it'd be a lot easier to defend if it's challenged with it's black and white. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's easier for for him to, for Mr. Yerger to say, look, you know, this is this is the ordinance because you know we could have someone come in tomorrow and say, well, I don't mean he's you know he's stuck because we're inconclusive. So. Personally, I like I like item E. I like how it's written. Um, I think the, the question comes down to which one do we strike out? I think I'm leaning towards striking out D. Okay, what what does it mean? The previous on on E on E the one on the end there. The previous conditional use rezoning requirement of rezoning a pre-existing pre home site where the dwelling has been removed, destroyed, or not habitable within the preceding year. What what part? What do, how does the preceding year work in there? Do you have any idea on that, Bob? No. <coughs> It, it shows the preceding year and then and where historical data can document the site as a previous home site. 
and it's, that would be considered a permitted use. That in itself is a little contradictory. It, but it, it, it links one and the other with the and. Yeah. Boards would be the, for my, in my opinion, for best for service to strike out within the preceding year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it says and, not yeah. or, but and. It has to be <coughs> both of them together. And I even think that the, the wording, the previous conditional use rezoning requirement should be striked because it doesn't matter. I mean, it used to, it, what do I read is it used to fall over here on page 12 as conditional use. I think that should just be striked out and basically just simplify, look, if there was a home on it, and the records show that there w it was a home site, then it's a permitted use. There's just, like you were saying, there's a lot of words that... Don't get to be there. Mm -hmm. Who's written by a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> well, or just people with good intentions trying to uh, protect, you know, a way of life and... and well, no I mean, doubt a lot of so those... A lot of this zoning came from somewhere else that yeah. was already in place. Yeah, yeah. E was moved from somewhere under C, you know, conditional use. I mean, it was just... <laughs> I don't think somebody on a county committee made up this whole, whole thing. Because technically, in E, the first, the, the word, the previous conditional use or rezoning, is an error anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about originally a permitted use, not a conditional use. A conditional use is something that is done outside the permit the original permitted use of the of the track. And so and you've got a lot of grandfathered properties in the county that are that mm -hmm. are in that uh, are on small acreages. Um, so I think that the committee and the full board needs to decide what the mission is for growth. I mean, obviously, the, the counties have a long history of protecting um, tillable prime farm ground. I mm -hmm. think that still, some of that still remains. I'm not sure it's as staunch and as adverse as, you know, as it was in the past when this was developed. Um, but if you have a mission that you want to if there's an existing three or four acre track and it had, and it had any kind of <coughs> building to it at all, it's not never been farmed. If that's your mission to allow those to be built, then the ordinance should strictly say mm -hmm. anything. You just it should just take one paragraph, and then obviously then your bulk requirements are part of that, and that should be the end of it. Now you've got parcels like Marvin brought up that are sold off the original farm. Now, do they fall under that? Um, out of, under that ordinance then? Because then you've got, you've got a lot of bigger farmers that have bought and it, large tracks that's got the old farmhouse on it. First thing they do is sell off a plot house and five acres off mm -hmm. some of their investment back. So somebody come and put it on the market real estate, the real estate market, they sell privately and they split it off. And so look, so um, under our ordinance, the way it's always been explained to me before I got this, came to work here 11 years ago and currently is if it's an existing homestead if we're part under our zoning ordinance the way it's always been explained to me is if some, the big thing for the lenders is if something would happen to the house you know, burnt down tornado wind you know any kind of um, and the or I was always told that they would be allowed to rebuild if it was destroyed for any reason well that's not spelled out anywhere I've never found that those, those actual wording in any of our ordinances that says that. So, um, and, um, so there's just things that, you know, over time you, you, you see and learn, and like Marvin's right, this was probably taken from some, majority of this was taken from some other entity, other county, at one time when they did it. Um, so, I don't know if we about it. 2000 for this one, but so I think we the, the, the mission of the county needs to be defined better. And as far as what they want, I mean, you limit, you reduce your restrictions on multiple size. 
sold you know, your house carefully over in the last several years. Um, you dropped base flood on elevations for building a house. So we've done things to make it easier and simplify it, but there's other things that muddy it up and complicate it. So I have no, you know, and so whatever. John. I think one thing uh, what Bob says is, is correct. In fact, it sounds to me like maybe this discussion ought to go beyond day one and consider rural homestead also because the two are related. And maybe one possible solution <coughs> to clarify some of the confusion would be that a person buys 80 acres or had a, a house on it and wants to sell off five acres around the house, maybe that process of that sale should also include changing it from A1 to rural homestead. Automatically. Automatically. Then you wouldn't have some of this confusion and, and so forth that, that is just there. If the owner still continues to make, have the 80 acres or whatever size it is, bigger than 75, and wants to build a house on it, that's covered already in the ordinance. I mean, there's ways to approach it. I mean, you can complicate ordinances to extremes, or you can try to simplify them. I mean, I obviously other jurisdictions have very complicated mm -hmm. zoning ordinances. I don't think we <coughs> should go down that road. I, we, That's when you drive people. In, in our review of the ordinances, again, over the time that I've been on the board and spent a lot of time on zoning, we did go with that approach to try and do that. Obviously, you can't do everything or what have you, but I think we didn't, did we used to have two rural homestead classifications? And we there's still, there's rural residential and rural homestead. There's two agricultural. Two A, two A. Yeah, we yeah. tried yeah. to change some of that, again, to make it simpler and easier to keep people that could build on it. Yeah. 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 It's always been our intent to do that. Yeah. 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 And there are prime places for people to come in and live in the building yep. and build on it. We tried to find ways to do that. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Getting so built back up and getting back on the tax rolls. Well, I think that, you know, if the person has the A1 property and sells part of it off for the purposes of, of being a homestead or a home site, it should automatically go to change the classification of it. It's really not A1 anymore. It's separate. It's separate on the tax roll. And it does, for lending purposes, it simplifies the property owner's possible, I shouldn't say automatic, but possible headaches down the road. Because loans have been denied by the secondary market based on an A1 zoning, even with the language that they can be rebuilt at the standards. I've seen it. Now, if it's rural homestead, it's a, it's, that's a, that's, it's technically, in the appraisal world, if it's A1, it's legal non-conforming. And that's a red flag, big red flag for, now, a lot of your local lenders don't care if they automate a house, they don't, you know, they don't sell them on the secondary market. But, federal government does. So it becomes a big issue and it's not clearly defined. And like I said earlier, just a little bit ago, when you put that language in an appraisal report, I can't find it in the ordinance in writing to back that statement up. And that's a problem. Any further discussion? But I think we're heading in the right direction if you want to start, you know, do a mission, clean it up, and clarify what I'm, what yeah, the requirements are. I agree with Chad. We want to take out this gray area, and it's black and white, equally dependable. And that's not, I have no issue with that at all. I think that's, I would love that, actually. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I've always thought that you put, you when it was put on your plate, and I understand why budget stuff, I've, even before I was on, I always thought that that was, too much. Maybe not, but I well, that's well, unfortunately the building doesn't have been like it was yeah. <laughs> ten five to eight years ago, so that yeah. can be a problem going forward, but I think right now it's not terrible. 
to, to be specific then and, and to clarify again, what are we uh, intending to, to change, take out? I think what would be beneficial is for all of us to just look at A1 and then, you know, next meeting, if you have time and you want to type up a wording or something or some changes, go copy, just, and then we can merge from there. And I think we just start with A1. Personally, I'd like to see us do a little more homework than that. Yeah, I... But, I mean, as far as coming back with some yeah. wording, you know, because uh, Bob's given us some good yeah. wording like the uh, rebuildable. I, I don't think I'm qualified to to make... Uh, You're qualified enough to give an idea that we can then merge. That's what I'm saying is if we all come with something, yeah. we can look at what the best is and and go forward because if we can make it good and then get the other <coughs> council on board with us to help market meet some farmers and make it an incentive to come down here, we might get some of that retired firemen, doctors, you know, the people that grew up in the country but now but had to work in the city but now want to come back. I'd like to so. personally, I don't know, maybe the committee would disagree, but uh, I'd like to see everybody take this home, read section one through section seven and come back next month with suggestions. Everybody have a list of suggestions, corrections, etc. That way we take this uh, half at a time and then we're not screwing around for six months, seven, eight months trying to go through this. I think it's a month away. I think everybody should have time to be able to read seven sections. So, that's 62 pages. Not too bad. You, you so with the that. intent just to <laughs> mark out error, mark out things that we should discuss. Things you want discussed and, and corrections you have in mind. And if we type it on a separate piece of paper, handwrite it, whatever you guys want to do, that's what we've done in the past mm -hmm. and it's worked out pretty well. Yeah. Everybody bring them, we compare notes. Uh, and then we can kind of go from there and, and rewrite it as, as we feel necessary. That's worked out very well. And please, please give us your preferred wording on certain things that are like like the rebuildable thing. That is a key. Yeah, that's that's important. So, because uh, we have to make it as simple as possible for you, so that you don't have to. So it's clear when people come in and ask. Like, I feel for you in your job. Hey, get down. It's very clear in our ordinance. If yeah. property is damaged, if it's a non-conforming property, and if it's damaged over 60%, it has to conform to current zoning. So there's, there's you, know, you know, the old houses on the main, you know, main drag in the business district. If it gets damaged, they don't want it to be a house anymore. They want it to revert to business. Same way with in the country, if it's going, you know. So, but there's nothing, we don't have even a 60% rule here, we just have, in general, I think we should just have something that says you can rebuild if it's so. To clarify, I mean, just at least, at least up there, you know, 60% is the cutoff for um, structures. I don't say that's the right percentage. Don't, yeah. Don't there's yeah, I looked at theirs. There, they theirs is intense. Yeah. Every, I mean, everything is on there, and then Ford County has a lot of theirs online too to compare. So. Seven sections? I guess. <laughs> a few pages a night, that's not too bad. A couple pages in the morning while you're drinking coffee, a couple pages a night before I go to bed. It'll be done no time at all. <laughs> not like these are that long. Hey, but <laughs> eight o'clock at night before the meeting, that, that's going to be. Yeah, that, that would be a little yeah. troublesome. Okay. I think that's uh, the best course of action because yeah, I, I agree there is a lot of convoluted uh, paragraphs in here. So, uh, and your and your conditional uses in certain mm -hmm. certain zonings and stuff seems to be a little antiquated, yeah. outdated. So we and there's some big. I think it's consensus as a committee. I'm I'm sure without even asking, I'm uh, I'm positive. I I could say this. It's consensus as a committee to be able to make building a house easier. And uh, and and, 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 and what do you want <coughs> to be? You know, the conditional uses is a big one because people are always asking, can I? build a, a shop or a, a repair shop or, you know, yeah, roadside, you know, stand and it's, it's just, it's vague. 
Um, and for the most part, a lot of it's still pay. I mean, you don't want somebody to, to build um, a, a doctor's office on a farm stead. You know, you just don't want that kind of stuff. But And the farm industry's changed so much, a lot of our stuff doesn't fit because you got organic farmers now that actually sell stuff out of We've got actually technically, if you really read the ordinance, all these farmers that got these seed corn uh, hopper bins next to their tool sheds, the, the seed salesmen that sell seed bulk out of their farmstead, that's technically not a permitted use under A1 anymore. It's considered that's considered a retail business. They should have a conditional use zoning. Are we going to go out and tell all our local farmers, the seed salesmen, that they? I mean, it's gray enough that you could make that case. Mm -hmm. They would have to do a conditional use. Now, I don't want to go down that no. road. No. That's counterproductive because the, you know, all your seed companies have forced their, their seed salesmen to do it off on their own sites because they don't, just because of cost and, and stuff. So I think that's stuff that we need to clarify mm -hmm. in an update. <coughs> change. <coughs> to me, it's a very viable use on the farm for a seed salesman yeah. to sell seed off his place. But, I mean, you could make the case in some of the way it's written that it's not a permitted use without having a conditional use zone. And I think that's a mistake. But that's, but that's stuff you, all the time, things change. The, 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 the ag industry changes so fast, it's hard to keep up. Yeah, I think there's a, that's, a, that's a good point. And we can go about this with uh, making it easier to build houses and still respect the agricultural heritage mm -hmm. of Iroquois County. Encourage it. There's a lot of small town, yeah. small stuff. I'm getting into bees and all that. I mean, there's a lot of people that will retire and start that, and then they'll build a modest home that can that can be sold when they decide to move. I've always been a big proponent of not increasing taxes, but increasing the tax base. Yeah. <laughs> well, that. And the only way we're going to get more business is if we get more people living here. The the only downside of that, and it's not really too big a downside side is when you get somebody building a house out in on a farm and then they complain because of the smell or the chemical, uh, that kind that's, of thing. That's not our problem. Nope, they should, that's, just, that's their no issue. Problem. They can complain all they want. Don't move I mean, into Obviously it. the big thing, Will County tried to do massive expansion and let people mm -hmm. build on 10 acres or more out um, in the country. Well, the biggest complaint they got, which is still a problem, is most of their country roads in Will County are gravel. Uh -huh. And the dust problem is terrible. And these white people are paying for building five hundred six thousand dollar homes and they had to, they couldn't open their windows because uh -huh. people drive by and people pull it up. Well, instead of repaving the roads, they changed the ordinance. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and we don't want to we don't want to have an issue like he had in the past where there's little mini subdivisions popping up all over the place. Uh -huh. No. I think we should just use what we have that's not being farmed and then somehow market that to those that are and retiring. And that solving, could potentially solve another issue that's come before this committee dozens of times, and that's cleaning up of old properties. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if, if they're viable in the market again as a, as a homestead or uh, anything of that sort, then it might be a little bit more of an incentive for somebody to clean it up and, and put it on the market. So that'd be that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, everybody is okay though with seven sections. You want to leave it at that? We can table this till next month. <laughs> I think we can handle it. <laughs> I want to. I want this to progress at a reasonable rate. I think. Yeah, it's just to look for error, yeah, well, but is the one we need to concentrate on. I think, and if you're mm -hmm. going to concentrate on anything, everything else has been looked at pretty hard over the last couple of years. Yeah, the, the yeah. general ordinance one we is, can, the, is the one with a lot of gray area and, and undefined stuff. Uh, that's in my opinion. Well, and we the can the the, the housing one is the one that we really have to look at. You know, section chapter three or section take three. We can take it through but section five. Yeah, but the other sections four and five, I, don't, I mean, we'll find some stuff, but it's for me, the housing is the big one that we have to, let's, uh, so. let's break it up then yep. in, in three sections. We'll, we'll take it uh, section one through five, then we'll come back yep. to the committee next month, but everybody has suggestions, that includes uh, anybody. Larry, if you wanted to look through it, you're more than welcome. Have some input in it too. Charlie, Anyone? John.
Anybody? So you're saying section one through five? Section one through five for next month. That'll make it a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite 52 pages, so you'll get it. We'll go with that. And then uh, break it up into the three months, and that'll make it a lot easier to take this into smaller pieces, and then nothing will get missed. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, That's okay with everybody here? Okay with you, Bob? Any, any and I, and actually, and, and my suggestion is take our time. Do it right. Do it right. Because if you do it quick, then all of a sudden you've created another big gray area that you don't have any answers for. Yeah. And, and um, and that's just, you know, and there's no rush because you're going to have to go through the process anyway as far as the zoning board of appeals, public hearings, that sort of thing. And so I will eliminate as many questions or, you know, obviously, you know, as you can prior to going that way. But so. There's no sense in getting in a big rush because it's all going to have to be played out in the process anyway. So you might as well have it done right and then you'll already look at your question. Is there any other state, state other than probably uh, plumbing and electric? Not that is? Yeah. State going out of the Well, they don't have the Act. For non-conforming stuff. And mm, okay. But there are not the local unit ordinances or the other one and two done locally. The state gets more involved in them. You know, so I would, I mean, maybe between that, but I think that should be yeah, a each zone. And the pipeline. <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. Bob, well, if we're good with that, we'll just table it then until next month. We can discuss it again next month. <coughs> okay. So any other input? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the plans? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The most of the first plans. I told me that we move uh, by Ernie. Uh, uh, oh, Ernie. Oh, I'll second. Somebody will second. Uh, second by Chad. Take the point. Okay, can you call the roll, please? Tignot? Yes. Curtis? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Raymond? Yes. Any old business come before the committee? New business? new business. There are motion blue jar. So moved. Moved by Marvin. Is there a second? Second by Ernie Curtis. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion.